Welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. So today we're back on the pole barn house. Let me tell you what we got going on. So as you can see, I pulled out the last of my two by six lumber. This is what's left over from framing in the exterior walls. I have a couple different stacks. Problem is the majority of this I had set aside through the build out there underneath the tarp that we cleaned up in uh, yesterday's episode because the majority of it was kind of bowed. I bought a huge stack of lumber and this little bit right here was quite bowed, so I think that's pretty good out of the huge thousands of pound loads that I got. Some of these over here are straight, some are bowed. So, here's what we got going on today, and we may not have enough lumber to do a very good episode here. That's why I'm showing y'all all this. So the plan today is to get up on the attic. The floor is finally done, and we're going to start building these stub walls right here. We've got a tiny one to raise right here, one here. So there's four walls per side, counting this tiny little one. We've got to build base plates. we got to do uh, wall studs, 16 inch on center, just like these were done. And believe it or not, we've got to do double top plates on this tiny little thing, even though it's not connecting to the roof. Makes no sense, I understand. But the engineer plans say we got to do it. So we're just going to do it. There's no point in arguing about it. Let's just get it done. Yes, I would love to save that extra piece on four walls for a top plate. It winds up equaling a decent amount of money when it's all said and done. But we're so close. Let's get it done. So we've got to dig through and try to find several straight pieces to do uh, two top plates, one bottom plate. That eats up three pieces of good lumber right there. And I don't know that I have more than that. So we may only be able to do a couple small walls today and one big wall but I want to go ahead and do those so I can see what lumber I have left over because I've got to make a hardware store run to purchase the last two by sixes I need for everything else. That's kind of why I want to go ahead and go through these stacks of lumber, find the good stuff, build the walls, and I know everything that's left just has to be used for scrap stuff around the property, blocking, which I think I'm done with blocking. We'll use it for something, trust me. There's always building to do. Then I know exactly what to go to the hardware store and purchase to finish this out over the next few days. So that's the plan. Let's get these stub walls finally done. Then, guess what? We can actually go sheathe the outside. Let's move toward that quick, fast, and in a hurry. So this is probably a good time to reiterate something. I haven't shown the plans in a while, but a lot of people keep seeing the comments, people wondering, why am I going overboard on nails? Why am I doing this so crazy? I'm not, I'm simply doing what the engineers called for and what the plans called for. So if y'all look down here at these edges, you see all the nails, people think I'm doing every two inches. I'm not, I'm doing about every four inches because the plans say every four inches on the edges I have to put nails and then it specifies out in the field that is a non edge of a sheet but where a joist runs I have to do every eight inches right here so I'm doing exactly what the plans call for some people think the inspector would never check that that's far from the truth one of the first inspections I had to have well not one of the first but one very important inspection I had to have was on the roof same exact nail pattern four inches on edges eight inches in the field inspector came out here with a tape measure crawled up there and measured them very important now if you think that's crazy you go just a little bit further to the coast here and you have to do three inches on edges six is six inches in the field because of all the wind and uplift i need to constantly remind people too this may seem overboard like 12 inch on center and everything else i'm doing here we are in a hurricane zone. We're only about 40 miles from the coast in Florida. So keep that in mind as you see things get built a little crazy. Yes, some things I'm overdoing myself. Why not? A lot of these things the engineer calls for, and I will not pass if I do not do them.
fuck I often do. I made it too tight.
Well, I was about to film my outro and I'm watching deer walk across the back side of the pasture. That's pretty awesome. No way you'll be able to see it with this little GoPro, but it's going across the back side of the field way out there right now. Lord, it is burning up hot in the afternoon. Cool. All right, I love that stuff. That's why I love living in the country. So today was a little bit of a short episode, and I knew it would be. I have run out of lumber, but it's already in the afternoon, and it's not like I don't have stuff to do. I've probably got an hour and a half, two hours worth of canning I'm about to go start. I've got a bunch of cucumbers that somehow grew off of dead vines. So I'm going to take advantage of it, turn them into pickles, because I found a recipe this year that, oh my goodness, has turned out to be some of the best pickles I have ever had. But we're not talking about pickles. Let's talk about the walls. All right, so here is the stub walls. Hopefully this is making sense to everybody now. This is why I needed to get the attic done so I had working room, could build the walls, and the way I decided to nail them down on top of everything. Now, yes, I'm going to get some questions, some concerns. I know this is kind of an unorthodox way of building, but uh, keep in mind, even though we have built up to this point, like these are load-bearing walls, they absolutely are not. Look, they do not attached to the roof now eventually i might have to trim this out so whenever we do spray foam it doesn't go anywhere but once you get out here and i cover the bottom side of the porch it will actually butt on the other side of these and i'm gonna figure out how to trim and lock those together um and then i just need to fill this cavity in with something so when we come back with spray foam it doesn't go over into the porch those are little type of details i have to figure out later now i am not done with these walls so don't be so quick to judge I've got them nailed into every single floor joist. I've got them nail in, nailed into the cap plate on the outside, that two by eight. Got them nailed into the six by six post. In another episode, we're gonna come back and lag bolt every single one of these in. Because even though these aren't load bearing, they're still somewhat of a sheer wall, although they're out of impact and a lot of wind, but uh, wind does crazy things. So I'm okay with the double top plates. Plan said I had to do them anyways. There's, there'll be zero flex here, zero shear, and uh, we're gonna wind up lag bolting these in too to make for sure no wind could ever blow them in. So keep in mind, we're not done before y'all get to ask me about this. So I got these two done, and I had just enough lumber out of that old bowed nasty stuff that I had to go ahead and finish this little stub wall. And I got that one done over there. So I kept with exactly how downstairs is, all these are 16 inch on center carrying from the direction that I plan on bringing my sheathing. So if you're wondering why some studs look a little off, it's because they are matched up perfectly with what's downstairs. Let's go take a look at that. Okay, so now this should make sense. Now y'all can see why it's taken me to this point to get ready to sheath the house. I have to do this on both sides. Now I have a full 12 foot wall ready to go, ready to sheath. Now keep in mind what I just said, once we sheath this, that's critical because that will essentially tie everything together. I know you're looking at straps and some things don't make sense. Again, I'm doing what I was told I had to do, but yes, non-load bearing walls. But once we put sheathing over the outside, it technically acts as a hurricane strap. So along with all the lag bolting, nailing, probably some screwing I'll do too, once we sheath over the outside, everything is absolutely locked together. It's not going anywhere. Keep in mind these bottom walls or have tightened anchors in the ground. So shear is what we have to be concerned about more than anything around here with this type of home being in a hurricane zone. But it is gonna be unbelievably strong. Everything is tied in solid to the concrete and to these six by six posts that are also five foot deep in concrete. So there is a quick look at what that'll look like. Ah, I just ran out of lumber. This is all too bowed. I'll use it on something else. It's the last of everything I have. Otherwise, I could have finished this wall and had one whole side done. So the plan is I'm about to wrap up all these tools, come back out here, figure out exactly how much more lumber I need. I'm going to go in the morning, pick that lumber up, and probably over the next day and a half, we're done. We are absolutely done. So by the end of the week, I plan on having all the little final detailed stuff buttoned up, and possibly next week we start sheathing the outside. Got to talk to the inspector about a couple of things. And I got to watch the weather too. I mean, if it's going to be 70% chance of rain every day, I can't put up two or three sheets, let it get absolutely ruined and wet and have to stop back and forth. I kind of need a couple day stretch of low to no rain chances. Yeah, I know funny here lately, right? Um, to feel comfortable, I'll probably start on this back wall, 
start working my way around and I'm gonna see if I can get permission or see if the inspectors in this area daily to come out and inspect my nail pattern real quick and allow me to go ahead and wrap it and tie back. That's what I'm fingers crossed praying for. Because typically what you do is sheath your entire house, get your nailing inspection done, then you can go back and caulk your joints, wrap your house in tie back. But normally there's a whole crew doing that and they can sheath an entire house in a day or two, you know? Me, it's gonna probably take a couple weeks to sheath this entire thing. So I, I wanna get permission to kind of get inspected as I go, especially on these two outside exposed walls. As far as this wall and the front porch, I really don't care. If I put sheathing up and it rains or something stops me, chances are it's not getting blown in wet anyways. And if it does get a little bit of spray on it, it will dry off. OSB can get wet some, it just does not need to get soaked. And I don't want the rough cut edges to really get soaked. That's where my biggest concern is. All right, so hopefully y'all have enjoyed this. I wish there was more in it, but I knew this was gonna happen. I wanted to use up all the lumber I had, so now I can know exactly what to go buy and not spend any more money than I need to. And hopefully I have a good report for y'all. This is my, kind of my first good lumber purchase in a while, and I'm hearing again and again and again that lumber has dropped. I will find out in the morning, let y'all know. Thank y'all for watching.